Welcome to the shop. My name is Rachel Gingell. I have a Ford Jubilee here in the barn and today I'm going to do a 12 volt conversion on it. We're going to record the process so that you can follow along and do a 12 volt conversion on your tractor. We see so many Ford tractors through our shop here that have wiring that is shameful. It's all messed up. It looks extremely dangerous, like it's going to start a barn fire. So if you have a Ford tractor that's in a similar situation, this is the video for you. Electrical can seem a little overwhelming or daunting if you're not experienced with it, but this wiring harness is actually really simple and I'm going to show you how simple it is to put on so that you can have success doing a 12 volt conversion. We're going to use this basic 12 volt conversion kit, which is available on our website, farmtractorrepair.com. The basic kit includes the alternator and bracket and wiring harness, as well as written instructions. My dad and I put these instructions together. It's, it goes through every single step that you need to do on a 12 volt conversion, including a very simple to follow wiring diagram, which you can follow if you need the written instructions as well as video instruction. This manual is gonna be helpful to you and you can buy this separately if you um, want to buy that manual. We're also gonna put on these other parts too. It's a new solenoid, a terminal block, amp gauge, key switch, um, battery cables, a coil that is internally resisted, and I'll talk to you about what that means later on in the video, and a new belt. At the end, we're going to have a Jubilee Ford that has a charging system that works. It's going to be 12 volts, so if there ever was a time when the battery did need to be jumped, we could jump it with something else that's here in the barn. Uh, the, the headlights are going to be brighter. We'll be able to use it all day and come back the next day, and because the charging system worked, it'll start right up for us. It'll be a clean, simple, neat, uh, wiring harness that's on the tractor is just going to be all around so much better. So follow along with me. We'll get started. As you can see, I took the hood off of my tractor and you can do the same. If you've never taken your hood off before, make sure that you remove the bolts that are on the inside of the dash here. Those are often overlooked and if you don't know that they're there, it could be really frustrating, but you'll know to look for them and you can take those off and then it'll free up your hood to come off the rest of the way. Also then you can remove all of your old wiring system from your tractor. Also included when I say that I'm referring to the generator and bracket, a voltage regulator, any resistors that are on your system. If you want to put a new gauge in, you can take your old amp gauge out. Um, if you want to replace your starter button, you can take that off too. So whatever you want to remove from your tractor, go ahead and take off so that we can put fresh parts on. Up here where the generator was is where we're gonna mount the alternator. You can see that I already have my alternator bracket in place right here. And I use those same bolts that were uh, there to hold the generator into place. Then I have my one wire alternator up here and ready. You can see that I already put my new belt in and I'm gonna slide the alternator into the belt. And then it's going to, there we go. So I've got that in, and then in the bottom, there's a new bolt that comes with your alternator kit. I'm just trying to, there we go. So I slide that in, and then on this side, you'll go ahead and put your washer and nut. It's important that you drive the bolts in this way so the threads aren't sticking out here on the end. When you um, replace your belt, you have to slide it around the fan. If your tractor still has the shroud on it, it'll be a little more challenging, but look at the top, you can slide the belt around every single fan blade, roll the fan around until you get your belt into place here and replaced. Also, when you have your belt off, it's a good chance to test your water pump. I should have showed you before I tightened up my belt, but if you move your fan blades like this and there's play here, that would mean that you should replace your water pump and that'll be a good time to test it when the belt's off. Once you have that into place, then you're ready to install this next bracket. So if you look up here, this is going to go into the front of the engine block. Let me find the hole right there. And you just tighten that up. Just gonna get mine started and leave it a little bit loose here until I get the other end attached. Just like that. Let me get it started here. And then you wanna pull your alternator down and watch the belt. What you're aiming for here is just about a half inch to three quarters inch of movement on the belt. That's too much. So you can pull your alternator out, test how much your belt is and keep moving it until you like the position. I like that farther out on my tractor. It might be a little bit different with the belt that you're using, but 
make sure that there's half inch to three quarters inch of movement there and then you can go ahead and tighten up both this bolt here on the alternator and the one that's on the black block of your tractor. I'm choosing to put a new three post solenoid on this tractor. You don't necessarily have to do this as part of your 12 volt conversion. The reason why I'm doing it is because I want to have all new on my electrical system while I'm working on this tractor. And if you have the same mentality, you could replace your solenoid as well. Solenoids are not, uh, you, you can't buy them as a six volt solenoid or a 12 volt solenoid. It's just a solenoid. So you can see that it's just held on with these two fine threaded nuts. And my air cleaner, I took off. It is worlds easier if you can take off your air cleaner as well. It is possible to get around there and leave it on, but if you can take it off, it'll save you a lot of time. Next, I am choosing to put a key switch into the tractor. I prefer a key switch over an on-off toggle switch just for safety reasons so that nobody who shouldn't be starting the tractor is starting it. Behind the switch, there's just a washer and a simple nut. It feeds around on the back side. And on the side of the switch, there are some flat spots and that will help you get it in position there. Yeah, that's gonna be good, just like that. So then I'll just, uh, Tighten this down and the switch will be ready to go. The next item I'm going to put on is a new terminal block. You can reuse your terminal block if you want to. Again, this one, this isn't a part that's sensitive to 6 volt or 12, but I'm putting a new one on since my old one looked pretty worn, pretty used up. So that just screws on very simply like that. If your dash is rusted like mine, you can use a little grinding wheel like I just did to clean up the hole. You're not trying to regrind the hole, just clean up that surface rust that's on there so that your gauge will slide down easily, just like mine. Once you have it slid into place, there's a little strap like this that comes around the back side and hold that there. And then on each of these posts, you can put a washer and then a nut behind it and that'll hold the new amp gauge into place. Now we're ready to put the wiring harness on the tractor. My dad and I have tested a lot of different wiring harnesses that are on the market, and this is the one that we're happiest with. We're content with the length of the wires, the different connections that are on it, and so this is the one that we're going to offer to you to use as well. When you do have this harness, there are two red wires that come up towards the end, towards the dash here, you'll see that out of your harness come two red wires. So you need to know which one to put at the alternator and hook up to the right side of the gauge. So here's how you can tell. You can use a multimeter like this one, and I have mine set to continuity. This symbol right here means continuity, and that just is gonna help us connect the wires. You can test continuity by hearing it beep when you um, t put your two probes together. So I'm gonna have, I know that my longest wire here at this end of the harness where there's the coil wire and the alternator wire, I know that this one goes to the alternator, but I don't know which red wire at the end of this loop is, connects to this other end. So I can just touch my harness. There's no beep on this one, so I know that that's not the same wire. This one does beep, so I know that that's the same wire. So I am going to just kind of curl that over so that in a minute I know which one that is. And then I'm gonna take my multimeter out of the way because that's just, looks like extra wires there with those probes on the end. So the first wire I'm gonna put on is this one right here onto the alternator. Like, the, like I said earlier, this is a one wire alternator, so that's all you have to do to hook up the alternator. This white wire is gonna go to the coil and I'm just gonna set it towards that side of the tractor for now, we'll come back to it. And then the rest of your harness, you can tuck back here behind the carburetor and dry, follow it all the way back up here. And then this is the alternator wire. It's gonna go on the negative side of the gauge right here. So you're just gonna situate that there and then put your nut right on top of it and hold that in place for now. On the positive side of the gauge, we're gonna put two wires. The first one is going to later connect to the starter solenoid. And the second is this little jumper wire, which we're gonna later connect down to the terminal block, which is going to feed power to the ignition switch. But for now, you can just put both of those wires onto the positive side of the gauge. Gotta make sure that they're all the way up there so I got enough threads. And then I'll tighten this nut up to hold them in place. I 
I'm putting both the jumper wire and one wire from my ignition switch on this side of the terminal block. It doesn't matter which side of the ignition switch wire you're using, just one or the other. So those two wires go on that, that side. And then this wire is going to be my coil. I did have to put a loop connection on the end of this wire because um, it is this wiring harness is designed that it could be used with a resistor if you want to, but we are not putting a resistor on. So you'll have to replace that to a loop terminal as well if you need to. But on the other side of the terminal block, we've got the coil wire and then the opposite side of the ignition switch wire. In case you don't know how to change the terminal type, I'll show you how. I just have a piece of scrap wire here. So you're gonna cut off the end and you can just make a cut with a tool like this to cut the wire. And then you can slide the plastic casing off just like that so you reveal a good amount of the wire here on the end. Sometimes you gotta kinda gather that up if it frays out a little bit because you wanna make sure that when you put your new terminal over top that it can slide over all the wires and none get caught inside there. You wanna slide that through until you see some copper wire out the end, maybe not that much, but just like that. And then you just crimp it down. See how I have the, this tool is made for different styles of terminals. So I'm using the round here, and then you gotta squeeze it pretty hard like that. And then this is snug and secure on there. And that's how you change a terminal type if you need to for your harness. On the battery side of the solenoid, you're gonna connect this wire, which goes up to the amp gauge that we connected earlier, as well as your battery cable. This is gonna be your hot battery cable, which will be positive when we hook it up. So when you put your cable on here, just be careful of which way you have it positioned. You wanna make sure that it's not gonna to touch the case and cause an arcing situation there. So I'm just gonna leave that up and out of the way. We'll hook that up later. Next, you do need to choose this wire here, which will eventually trace back down around to the starter button. But for right now, that's the only wire that goes on this post of the solenoid. So I'm gonna set a washer and nut there. And then on the left side of the solenoid, that's your bat, um, starter side. I should apologize there, I said that wrong. So you're gonna connect this wire. This cable here has two loop ends, which is different from this cable that has the um, battery end. So that's gonna go here, and then this just loops around and goes right onto the starter. Notice that we're not making any changes to the starter itself. You don't have to change anything. Let me connect it here first, and then I'll twist it around. But once you have that all hooked up, your solenoid will be all set. I'm gonna feed this wire through underneath the dash here and attach it to the starter button. The starter button is a neutral safety switch. So if your starter button is not working, go ahead and look through our channel videos for the 8N Ford 12 volt conversion video. Uh, both the side mount and the front mount, we show how to replace the starter button and be the same exact process on this tractor. Then you can just tighten that screw up and that will attach that wire onto the starter button. Now you notice I have one extra wire here at the end. That is for tractors that are newer than my tractor that require a four post solenoid. There would be an extra post right there and that's where the um, wire would connect. That would be like a 2000 or 4004 cylinder Ford would be new enough to have that style set up. So if your tractor requires that sort of four prong solenoid, you can use that wire or those tractors can be wired up just like this one. You can use a three post solenoid on those. And if you're using a three post solenoid, you can just cut this wire off, take a pair of wire cutters and cut that wire on both ends very close to where this wrap is, just so that it's out of the way. You don't wanna leave it on the tractor and have extra wires hanging off. That's what we're trying to avoid here. So just cut that out of the way. This is a 12 volt coil that is internally resisted, meaning that it doesn't require an external resistor. And a resistor is a white porcelain part that is rectangular shaped. They're really common on Ford tractors, but they're not needed if you choose to go with a coil that is internally resisted. This is more modern. Sometimes people will try to use an old coil and pair it with a resistor, but oftentimes it's not set to the right voltage since, since um, resistors are sold in different ohms. 
So it's really difficult. It's so much easier to just use a 12 volt coil that's made for this type of system. It's a much more reliable tractor. If you've heard somebody say that they run their tractor and then five, for five minutes and then it quits, it's normally a coil and resistance problem. So using this style coil eliminates the risk of that problem happening for you in the future. So use a coil like this one. You reuse the strap from your old coil and you can see that it just tightens up here. It's got a head on this end that looks like a screw and then a, a square nut on this end and you just tighten it up so that this strap holds the coil into place and it's going to set right back here. Before I set it back there, I should point out that this side is positive and this side is negative. So when you are affixing it into the strap, you want to make sure that you get the um, right side uh, going the right way, getting your coil going the right way. And try to get this started. I dropped the bolt here. I'll just show you how this is gonna wire up and then I'll mess with trying to get that situated. So this is the wire from the wiring harness that we fed through the front here. And this wire is gonna go on the positive side of the coil. And then you're gonna put this wire that comes out of the distributor on the negative side of the coil because that's going to eventually get ground when it comes into the distributor. And then this wire that came from the center of your distributor cap is gonna feed over and go onto the top of the coil. If you want to, you can replace your points condenser and rotor and spark plug wires if you're here and notice that that needs the maintenance, but it's not required for a 12 volt conversion. Those components are not sensitive to six volt or 12 volt. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten up my coil and I'll tighten up those wires on either side and we'll be situated over here. Now I'm ready to hook up the battery. This is a 12 volt battery that is fully charged and you'll wanna make sure that your battery is fully charged as well so it can excite the new alternator. I attached a ground battery cable right here and you can attach one as well. I like to use a braided style for the ground and you can do that if you want to as well. I have my power cable already hooked up and that's hooked up to the positive side of the battery. This ground cable is gonna to come to negative. That might be different than your tractor was when it was six volt. Sometimes six volt is flipped the opposite way. So make sure that you have a negative ground system now that you are on the 12 volt system. It's also important that you hook up your power cable first. That helps to prevent any accidents so that you don't have a wrench touching anything metal that's around here since there's just a lot of points where you could um, make a mistake and, and accidentally arc yourself on the ground battery cable, see how this is kind of um, beveled in? That's gonna go down and then this flat side goes on top. It fits better that way. So you can just hook that up, make sure again that this is out of the way and then you can just tighten up your um, battery cable here. I use some zip ties to move the wiring harness out of the way and you can do the same. The harness does run somewhat close to the manifold so you want to make sure that it's out of the way of anything that's hot or moving and zip ties will uh, help you accomplish that. So with that, we're ready to start this tractor up and see the charge. <laughs> You can see the gauge start to climb. If I was to rev it up, it would climb the rest of the way, but we're inside and it's winter and the doors are closed, so I don't want to rev it up. But the charging system is working here and you want to see a positive charge on your gauge. A common place where people will make a little mishap on their 12 volt conversion is flipping over the two main wires that are on the back side of this gauge. And that'll show if your gauge is charging negative, you probably have those wires turned around. So if that's what you're seeing, check, make sure that you got your wires on the correct side, negative and positive for your gauge. I hope that this video tutorial is helpful to you and it gives you all the confidence you need to do a 12 volt conversion on your very own Ford tractor. Remember that we do have a manual that goes over this process with a wiring diagram that's very easy to follow. So you can uh, purchase that and use that as a guide for you when you do your very own 12 volt conversion. Parts are available on our website, farmtractorrepair.com. And on our YouTube channel, we have a ton of videos on this model of tractor. We show how to put a new clutch in, how to do an engine rebuild, the distributor, hydraulics, etc. So you can look through our channel and find those videos, which will be a good resource to you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. <laughs>